Hi, I'm Danica Fine with Confluent, here to introduce the brand new Confluent Terraform provider. Whether we're spinning up isolated test clusters or promoting fully integrated clusters across environments, we all know just how important programmatic support for cloud infrastructure is. And that's where Terraform comes in. Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool that reduces the hassles of resource management for your cloud-based deployments. With Terraform, infrastructure is defined through configuration files written in simple, human-readable language. Infrastructure updates are expressed with an execution plan of changes, which can first be reviewed for safety and then applied and provisioned. Extensible plugins called providers allow Terraform to manage a broad range of resources, including infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, and hardware services. The Confluent Terraform provider is one such plugin that specifically interacts with Confluent Cloud APIs to define infrastructure resource definitions that are reusable and versionable, making it simple to stand up applications, automate changes, provision new and isolated environments, and more. Now, that all sounds great, but why don't we break these features down a bit more? Terraform enables industry standard GitOps and infrastructure as code practices. And its human-readable configuration means that users can easily define, version, reuse, and share resource definitions that everyone understands. These resource definitions can give you de consistent deployability, where you can safely and efficiently provision and manage your infrastructure throughout its entire lifecycle and package reusable modules. With the Confluent Terraform provider, users can manage multi-cloud environments with ease, seamlessly deploying Confluent Cloud across a variety of cloud providers. And from there, Confluent Cloud resources can be managed, including API keys, environments, Kafka clusters, topics, ACLs, RBAC, private networking, and more. And of course, all of this adds up to quick and easy deployments, even for complex independent infrastructure, meaning that scaling isn't a problem. Let's see the Confluent Terraform provider in action with a short demo that showcases the provisioning workflow. We've provided a link below that will take you to the demo repository just in case you'd like to follow along. We'll start off with the Confluent Terraform provider hosted in the HashiCorp Terraform registry. On this landing page, you'll see high-level metadata on the provider. It's open source, so you can also view the source code directly on GitHub. A few things to note in the source code repository. First of all, the changelog file shows you recent changes made to the provider so that you can easily track updates. And within the examples configurations directory, you'll find pre-built configurations for a number of common Confluent Cloud scenarios. Let's dive into one of these sample configurations, specifically a standard Kafka deployment with role-based access control enabled. First, we pull the repository and navigate to the examples configurations directory, just as we did from the GitHub UI. From here, we'll go to the standard Kafka RBAC folder and open its contents in an IDE of choice. There are three files, main, outputs, and variables. The main.tf file contains all of our resource definitions. Let's break those down. First, the Terraform block references the providers that you need to provision your infrastructure. In this case, we're just dealing with the Confluent provider. Next, we configure the provider itself. For the Confluent provider, this just means defining the API key and API secret that we'll need to access our Cloud Kafka instance. From here, we can start defining and building resources. We're creating a Confluent environment called Staging. Within that environment, we're building a standard Confluent Cloud cluster called Inventory with the following specifications. We then define a service account called App Manager that will manage the Kafka cluster. And then we move on to create API keys for this account. Things get a bit more interesting as we define a Kafka topic called Orders and additional service accounts to test our produce and consume workflows. For now, we don't want to authenticate using the credentials in our configuration. So let's remove those from the provider definition and comment them out in our variables file. Instead, we'll authenticate using environment variables. The outputs.tf file is also important. 
This is where we create our resource IDs variable, which we'll pre-populate with a bunch of things that we'll use to test later on. Keep this in mind. All right, now that we know what's going on, we can go back to the terminal and run this scenario. First, we'll run terraform init. This will initialize a working directory with the terraform files that are available within the current directory. Its primary function is to find and download the terraform providers that we've defined in our main.tf. Once that's done, we can go ahead and set our environment variables. You'll fill in your own Confluent Cloud API key and API secret. Keep in mind that in order to provision service accounts, as we're doing in this example, you'll need to get this key and secret from an org admin. That said, if you don't care about provisioning service accounts, you don't need an org admin key and secret. Next, we'll execute Terraform plan. This will walk through your resource definitions and determine an execution plan without making any changes. Specifically, it looks at the remote objects and resources that currently exist. It then compares the current state to the state defined in your Terraform file, and then outlines the proposed changes that will be made to get to the end state defined within your Terraform file. In this case, we're starting from nothing. So all of the changes are what we've already seen in the main.tf file. All in all, this plan will create 13 new Confluent resources. This is as we expect, so let's move on. Terraform apply will apply the infrastructure that we just reviewed. And just in case, it will also ask if we're really sure. And we are, so let's do it. Now Terraform will start to build up these resources just as we defined them. So with a bit of movie magic, we'll skip ahead. Once all of the resources have been created, we can see all of them within Confluent Cloud. Starting from environments, we see the staging environment and the inventory cluster. Now, when we drill down to the topics within inventory, we see the orders topic we were waiting for. Next, we should verify that everything is in working order. Basically, we want to test that our infrastructure is up and working as expected, and also check that the RBAC permissions went through. This is where we'll make use of the outputs.tf file. Running Terraform output resource IDs will print out useful commands that we can use to test. We'll use the pre-built produce and consume commands. Let's navigate to the orders topic messages tab so that we can see messages flow in real time. Then we can go ahead and execute the command. The first command will start a producer. From there, we have to manually enter the records one by one. We'll start with the first two records. Going back to the Confluent Cloud UI, we'll see these records appear. Again, we'll write that third record and check again that it shows up. So we verified the privileges of our producer service account. Let's check the privileges of the consumer service account. After starting the consumer command, we should see the output immediately, verifying that the RBAC privileges are correct. And that concludes this particular use case, a standard Kafka cluster deployment with RBAC enabled. Now, before we wrap things up, we should tear down our resources. Terraform makes this easy with the terraform destroy command. It first assesses the state of the resources and describes which will be destroyed as a result of the command. And of course, before it actually destroys them, Terraform asks if you want to proceed. That's a yes. And now, as resources are brought down, we'll see output logs describing the process. This is a hugely valuable command to have available, as it makes it easy to clean up everything so that you don't have any lingering resources. And with that teardown process complete, I encourage you to test out the new Confluent Terraform provider for yourself. From the Confluent Terraform provider page in the HashiCorp registry, there's a quick sample project available for you to use as a starting point. If this is your first time working with Terraform and Infrastructure as Code, I hope that this will jumpstart your experience. And as usual, I look forward to seeing what you build with the Confluent Terraform provider.